Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me again, and welcome to any new viewers. This is To The Point English with Ben. I'm Ben, and I have a slightly different video for you today because I'm going to be talking with my guest, Claire Whitmell, about how to get a job. <laughs> We're going to be talking about mostly the job interview, uh, but also a little bit about CVs. Now, Claire is an English teacher, but she also specializes in this field of how to get a job, the job application process. Um, so she really knows the challenges that uh, non-native English speakers face when going through the whole job seeking process uh, in English. Now, many of you who follow my YouTube channel are preparing for the Cambridge English exams. And you may be doing that just because you want to get the certification for yourself or maybe for motivational pur purposes. But I'm sure some of you are doing it in order to improve your, your job prospects, right? Um, being able to put on your CV that you have a, a B2 first or a C1 advanced or C2 proficiency qualification, you know, that, that gives you a real advantage over other candidates. Um, so, you know, in, in these videos, I focus on sort of before the exam, the preparation and during the exam, how to pass the exam. But what about afterwards? Once you have that certification, what do you have to do to get a job? And that's what we're looking at today. And as I said, Claire is an expert in this field, but she also focuses a lot on fluency. She helps students improve their fluency, which, of course, helps them in job interviews as well as other areas of life. Um, and she talks about her um, English Fluency Club, which um, I'll, I'll share the links to in the description if you're interested in that. So yeah, without any further ado, here's my chat with Claire. Hi, Claire. Welcome to my channel. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much for inviting me. No, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure to have you here. And I'm really looking forward to this chat, actually, because um, we're going to talk about job interviews, about you know, getting a job, how to get a job. And this is something I think that pretty much everybody has to do at some point in their lives. And um, I think this, <laughs> this chat is actually going to help me quite a bit because I haven't, I've been very lucky. I haven't had to go through the job application process for many years, but I do remember, I do remember sort of writing my CV, you know, updating my CV, going to job interviews. And it's, it's not the most pleasant experience. And often you don't really know what you're doing well and not and what you're doing not so well and what you can improve. So I'm looking forward to getting your expert um, advice and insights on that. But but first of all, I just I'm going to start with a, a very typical interview question. Um, right. could, you, could you tell us about yourself, Claire? <laughs> that is a fantastic interview question. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my name is Claire. And I've been helping people to be more confident in English for more than 20 years. And my main focus is the English Fluency Club. And this is a place where people can speak English regularly so that they feel more fluent and more confident. And this helps obviously for social situations, but also for work situations, including job interviews. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And that's what we're going to be speaking about today. So as you know, Claire, I think a lot of my subscribers and viewers on, on this channel are preparing for uh, English exams, specifically the Cambridge English exams. And I think it's a natural progression, right? A lot of people want to get the qualification, the, the certification uh, to put on their CVs um, to, to, to get a job, or maybe they're thinking of a, changing their jobs or they're looking for a um, some kind of career improvement or progress. So also, I think there are a lot of similarities between English exams, taking an English exam and interviews, particularly the speaking part of English exams, right? I guess yeah. you're being judged, right? And that's what people don't like in general. Exactly. It's natural. Mm. So, so yeah, I mean, what, what similarities do you see between English exams and, and job interviews? Exactly, as you said, they're mm. both really stressful situations. Um, in both uh, an, an English exam and an interview, someone is judging you, someone is deciding whether or not you're going to pass. So for example, in an exam, you might focus on not making mistakes, but in an interview, your focus is on proving to the interviewer that you can do the job, that you are the best 
person for the job. So in both situations, you're going to feel a little bit anxious, I think, because you are being judged. Yeah, it's something as humans, we don't like, right? And in both situations, you're trying to take the opportunity to impress somebody and often, well, almost always somebody you don't know. And it's not necessarily their job to make you feel comfortable. I guess it depends on the the type of job interview, but it's it's, not, as I said, not a particularly pleasant experience. So I'm looking forward to hearing your your tips on how to deal with these situations. But of course, most we, we, mostly we're going to talk about the job interview today. But of course, before you get to the job interview stage, you usually have to write up a CV and send your CV. So that's a big part of the job application process. So what other biggest or most common mistakes you see people making with their CVs? I think you can probably say that there are two main problems that I see with CVs. And the first one is that when people write their CV, they write everything that they have done. So they write all the jobs they have done. They write down all their experience, Mm. all the education they have had, all the qualifications that they've got. And the problem with that is that it means your CV isn't particularly relevant. So Mm -hmm. at least in the UK um, and in the States, your CV needs to be relevant for that particular job. And that means that you don't need all this extra information. And I would say that for most jobs, your CV should be no more than two pages. Mm -hmm. So if your CV is, you know, three or four pages long, you need to go back um, and look at your CV and then take out anything which isn't relevant for that particular job. Mm -hmm. The second problem that's very common on CVs is that they're actually quite boring so people might write things like responsibilities are or Mm. duties include and that doesn't say very much about you or the impact that you had in a previous job so somebody reads your cv and all they see is a list of your responsibilities they don't get any any sense of what you achieved in that job. Mm. Your CV is boring and it isn't very persuasive. Right. That's very interesting. Yeah, because I guess many people see CVs as just facts, right? Just a way to squeeze in as much information about yourself as possible. Mm. Um, but you're suggesting, yeah, you need to, I guess you need to stand out in some ways or, or give, I guess, most human resources departments get so many CVs they have to filter through that we want something that's going to connect with them in some ways. Yeah. You said a very interesting thing about, um, you, you know, you, you want to write all the facts. Um, you do need to write facts. You, the, lots of mm. people tend to tell lies on their CVs, which is not a good thing right. because yeah. people will discover those lies, especially in the interview. And the last thing you want in an interview, which is quite a stressful situation, is for someone to ask you a question about something thing which isn't true so obviously you need to tell the truth on on your cv but this thing about um wanting to show somebody everything about you i can understand that Mm. but when people do receive you know hundreds of cvs for one job then you can make that process easier Mm. by being super focused Mm -hmm. on that particular job keep that cv to two pages and that person reading it will thank you because mm. they're not reading through pages and pages. They're reading only the most relevant information. So it is true that less is more in this situation. That's interesting. And I've heard you speak before about um, using persuasive language. I guess that's what you're referring to here. Is it the, the persuasive language in, in CVs? Because I could, it's very interesting when I heard you speak about this because it's it's not obvious. I mean, you think about persuasive language in job interviews, but actually using it in CVs. And I I think there's some kind of connection, right, between CV and the job interview in this this, this case. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when it comes to writing CVs, um, when it comes to writing about, you know, previous jobs that you have had, my advice is to think about where you made an impact think about some of your achievements in mm-hmm. uh, in that job and then when you um, start writing your CV, 
focus on those achievements because those achievements will make you sound persuasive, will, will make you stand out. Um, again, you're not telling lies here. You're, you're talking about the things that you did well in a job. So basically, when we talk about achievements in a job, there are really three types of achievements. The first one is when you make money for a company. So an, an obvious example is that you increased sales of something, but it could be that you introduced a new product, for example. So that's the first category of achievement where you make money. The second category of achievement is where you save money for the company. So um, you might reduce costs in some way or you might reduce or you might save money, for example. And then the third category of achievements is when you save time. Maybe you introduced a new process, you streamlined things, you organize things better. So those are your three main categories. So when it comes to then writing about this in your CV, rather than saying responsibilities were you know, to sell products in a shop, which isn't very interesting, you could write a little achievement story, for example, increased sales of yogurt drink by 10% through product placement. Or if you wanted to talk about how you reduced the cost, you could say reduced uh, recruitment costs by £10,000 a year through outsourcing to a job agency. And the thing about these stories, what makes them persuasive is, first of all, you're using figures. So you're using um, percentages, increased sales by 10 percent, right. or you're using a dollar amount or a pound amount. So um, saved 10,000 pounds per year. So that's the first thing that makes them persuasive, because employers like to see results. They like mm. to see, you know, bottom line impact. And the second way that you're making your CV persuasive is that you're using more interesting vocabulary. So, for example, increased sales or reduced costs or streamlined. And this vocabulary is a lot more interesting than managed a department or mm. responsibilities were. So using a combination of, of um, figures and interesting vocabulary helps to make your CV persuasive. And one thing just to add, when you say things like increased sales, you don't need to use the word I. So this is another way of keeping your CV shorter. You mm -hmm. can just start your sentence with these kind of action verbs. And that makes you much, much more persuasive and your CV much more interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. These little details are important, aren't they? The mm -hmm. way that the, the CV is received. Yeah. So it's kind of a, a change in mindset right how you how you think about what you've achieved it's not you know how you present what you've achieved uh, and just kind of selling yourself of course that's and some people feel uncomfortable doing that but that's a nice way to look at it um you're not lying you're not even yep. exagger <laughs> exaggerating you're giving the facts you're presenting the facts in a more persuasive way which is which is what you want to do because yeah you're it's a it's a competition really isn't it you're you're there are potentially dozens or hundreds of other people applying for the same job so you want to find any way of standing out and and, and getting to at least to the the interview stage of the applications very very interesting yeah so yeah that that's the cv but then hopefully you'll get invited to an interview to a job interview right so that's where people get really nervous isn't it i mean that's that can be a really stressful uh, situation um but what, in your experience, what are the biggest mistakes that people make um, at interviews, at the interview stage of the job application process? Okay, so I think the first one is obviously an interview is a stressful experience. And then when people ask you questions, the tendency is to sort of like go on and on and on in your answer. Um, you, you don't know when to stop because you aren't sure if you've given the right information. So like on a CV, I think in an interview, if you can try and keep your answers short and focused, that makes you look like a a better communicator. Mm. Um, and the second area where I think people um, go wrong in interviews is that they just aren't prepared enough. So um, 
one way that you can be prepared in an interview is to try and anticipate the um, the the questions you're not going to be able to predict every question mm-hmm. that you're going to get but you can predict some of them and if you um if you practice answers to these questions they will make you feel more confident and that in th- these questions generally come at the beginning of the interview and when you're more confident then that sets the tone for the rest of the interview so a couple of questions you're likely to get at the at, right at the beginning of the interview the first one is a kind of question designed to make you feel more comfortable it might be something like oh did you find us easily or how long did it take you to get here mm. and that's a really simple question it's a very general one and it's easy enough to answer you know oh yes thank you your directions were very easy to follow or oh it only took me 40 minutes i came in on the central line for example so you can answer that question quite confidently the other type of question i think you're really likely to get at, right at the beginning is a question like tell me about yourself Mm -hmm. or why do you want this job and this is a question which I think you should really practice before the interview because what you want to do is to be able to answer one minute two minutes maximum Mm -hmm. and it's not an invitation to talk about everything that you've done in your life or where you were born or where you went to school because that's not relevant it's a question designed for you to link what you've done in the past to where you are now and why you want this job now. So you could answer something like, well, as you can see from my CV, I've been working um, in the restaurant trades for the last five years. Um, But more recently, I've been working front of house and I've become really interested in doing this, which is why I'm interested in this role where it is really front of house. For example, that's obviously if you want to move from working in the kitchens of a restaurant to working front of house. But the idea is that you match, you link what you've done in the past to what you do now. So that's the kind of tell me about yourself or Mm. why do you want this job sort of question. And I suggest that you practice this um, over and over again, that you ideally that you record yourself speaking and listen to yourself. The first time you hear yourself, you'd be like, oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> so you, you do it again and again and again. Um, actually, this is a technique we use in the English Fluency Club to get more confident. Mm-hmm. And as you say it more and more, you will become more confident, which means that when you get the sort of question in the interview, it's no problem for you. And you're already starting the interview confidently. And I think that will help both you and the interviewer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great advice because that I, I've always hated that question. Um, tell us about yourself. It's, you know, you never know. I never know how much I should say, where I should start. But that's obviously, again, keep it pretty concise is the is the tip. Um um, and practice. That's the most important thing. I, I see so many parallels to exam preparation, you know, mm. the speaking paper, you know, the, I always say, don't be scared, be prepared. The more prepared you are, the less nervous you're going to be. That's you a great tip. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you mm. can't, you can't prepare for everything in a job interview or in a, an English exam because you don't know the questions, but you, you can practice the type of questions you're likely to yeah. get. And as you said, yeah, recording yourself, listening back it's a horrible experience nobody likes the sound of their own voice but especially when you're speaking a second language but it's so so useful um, yeah so excellent how can non-native English speakers feel more fluent in in interviews I mean the the tips you've given are already are very useful but is there anything else they can do to, to yeah to improve their fluency or at least to feel more confident and fluent in interviews Yes, definitely. So the the first tip, obviously, is to predict the questions that you're going to get. So it's going to be a a general question. You'll probably get some behavioral type questions. Um, And then the other thing is obviously to prepare as much as possible. So, for example, if you know that you're going to use a certain word 
to describe um, your previous jobs or um, your skills. Make sure you know how to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sounds like a small thing, but in an interview, you don't want to be searching for these uh, for, for these words because you're not entirely sure how to say them. Mm-hmm. Make sure you know how words combine. So we, we call those collocations. Mm-hmm. So um, make sure you know about the company itself that you've you, you've you've read about the company. You know how the company um, works, how uh, the company sits uh, with its competitors, for example. Um, the more that you know, the better prepared that you are. Um, you can also obviously practice the entire interview if you can practice it with somebody else. So get someone to role play the interviewer with you. And again, that might sound strange at first, but it's very, very good practice. And the other thing to say about interviews is try and do as many as you can. Of course, if you attend lots of interviews, that means you're not getting lots of jobs. So that can be a little bit um, demotivating. But if you treat each interview as a kind of a practice conversation rather than thinking of it as an exam, then it gives you opportunities for speaking. So the more interviews you can do, probably the better. But then the other one is the other sort of tip is a kind of a mindset tip. And it's this in an interview, you have a little bit more power than you think, because essentially what the uh, interviewer wants is to fill this job vacancy. They actually do want to hire somebody and that person could be you. Mm. So treat it as a, a, a two way conversation. It isn't an exam. It's also your opportunity to find out about the company and treat it as speaking practice. Obviously, prepare as much as you can before, prepare some some questions and some answers, prepare the vocabulary and the pronunciation that you might need, but then go in there thinking, right, I'm going to find out about this company as well and try and take back some of that power. Mm, Yeah, excellent. That's a great, again, changing the the mentality, the mindset, right, of the interview, just see it in a more positive light. And I I like what you said about... um, sort of uh, seeing the interviewers practice almost so whether you get that whether you're successful or not it's a positive experience right you yes. think oh I didn't get the job it was a it's a failure I failed but no you've you've you are, you now are more prepared for next time each time you're a little yeah. bit more prepared so I mean I again relating it to exams I always say the best way to prepare for an exam is by taking the exam itself yeah and that can be demoralizing because if you need to take it again that obviously means you've failed but looking at the positives right now, I really understand how to do this exam with time management and all that. So it's the same with interviews and you're, you're more likely to have m- more than one interview than you are to have more than one exam. So yeah, I think that's great advice. It, it's something positive, even if you don't get the, and I, th- I think that makes you more, you can relax a little bit more. There's less pressure yeah. on it. Right. So even it, it's not the end of the world. If you don't get the job, you're, more experienced and you're more prepared for next time absolutely yeah Yeah, it's great now you mentioned behavioral questions just now um so could you just explain what are behavioral questions and and how how to answer them what's the best way of dealing with behavioral questions Okay, so yes, behavioral questions are another type of question that you can really prepare for and you can practice in advance. And it's called a behavioral question um, because the question is designed to find out about your behavior, about how you would act in a particular situation. And interviewers ask these questions to find out about your characteristics, about how you work. So they're questions that typically start, tell me about a time when, Mm -hmm. and then the question asks about this this kind of work practice. So the the types of uh, characteristics they want to find out about are, are going to depend on the role. So if you are going for a senior management role, they might ask you about how you work with strategy, for example. But for lots of other jobs, they'll be asking about things like your teamwork or your communication or your ability to work under pressure, for example. And so that sort of question could be, tell me about a time when you worked well under pressure. 
Mm -hmm. So the way you find out about this is when you read through the job district uh, job description, see if you can find, say, the three to five top qualities that they're looking for in this role. So are they looking for someone who's really ambitious? Are they looking for someone who works well under pressure, for example? So when you've identified three to five of these characteristics, you then need to think of three to five examples that show you in uh, using these characteristics. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, say the job description is someone who works well under pressure. The question is going to be, tell me about a time when you worked well under pressure. Now, you need to think about a time when you worked <laughs> well under pressure. And there's a format, there's a structure that you can use. And I call it the car format um some people you might have heard the star format but it's it's much the same thing so car format for me is simpler because it's just three steps mm -hmm. and the first step is the circumstance the situation so what was the situation where you worked under pressure imagine um you had to you had say yes two important projects and the deadlines were tight on both those important projects. That's an example of working under pressure. Then the A of car, so C is circumstance, A is action. What did you do in this situation? So, okay, you had these two projects. One, you think, I'm not gonna finish that on time. What did you do? So the first thing you did is you spoke to the project lead. You said, I don't think we're gonna finish this on time. And then the second action you took is you made a suggestion. You said, so I think we should ask our team to work overtime. It's going to cost more money, but we'll finish it on time. And say the, the project lead says yes. Mm -hmm. And then the R of car is your result. The result is we completed both projects on time. So you then have your little story. So if somebody says, tell me about a time when you worked well under pressure, we could say, oh, yes, well, recently... I had two very important projects um, and they both had very tight deadlines. And I was worried that we won't, we wouldn't make one of the deadlines. So I spoke to the project lead, I explained the situation and I suggested that we offer overtime to the team so that we could finish both projects on schedule. The uh, team lead agreed. Uh, and that's what we did. And I'm pleased to say we finished both projects to schedule. Mm. And that is um, your little uh, your little career story. Mm -hmm. It's a true example. And it demonstrates this uh, characteristic, this behavior, which is going to be important for the job. Mm. Yeah. So and it's very easy to remember, isn't it? Just car. So circumstance, action, result, yeah. whatever the question is you can just remember that order and yes like a story with a beginning a middle and an end a resolution exactly. um and you presenting uh, yourself and your actions in a, in a positive light so yeah excellent um so yeah I, i've always hated behavioral questions so that that's a good way to deal with them but uh, another question and again <laughs> I, i've had this question or the, this comes up a lot with exam preparation especially in the speaking paper but it must happen a lot in interviews you know when that situation when your mind goes blank uh, especially in a, a second language i think it, it's you know when you're speaking a second language you have more things to think about more more multitasking and sometimes you just maybe you, you literally your mind goes blank for that it's happened to everyone right at least once yeah or sometimes you just can't find a word or whatever it may be so do you have any recommendations on how to deal with that situation yeah, I mean, the first thing to say, obviously, is don't panic, but that's an easy <laughs> thing to say when you're in yes. an interview and, and all of a sudden you think, what was I going to say? Mm. So I think because if, you, if you're treating the uh, interview as a, as a two-way conversation, you can get the interviewer to help. Mm. So you're saying something, your mind goes blank, and you could say to the interviewer, sorry, where was I? Mm -hmm. And just get the interview to say, oh, you were saying this and this. And you ah, oh, yes, of course. Yes. So another thing. And then yeah, you so continue. Be honest, right? Yeah. Don't, don't try to hide it, I guess. Just be honest. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, and don't be freeze. Natural. Exactly. Yeah. Don't sort of like, you know, sort of freeze there with your with your eyes staring and in yeah. panic, you know. Yeah. So you, you can ask the interviewer or, or if 
um, sometimes the questions could be kind of long and complicated. So you could say something like, okay, so can we just break that question down a bit? So mm. you want to know about this. Okay, blah, 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 blah. And then if the interviewer wants more, then they'll probably ask for the second and for the third part. But I would definitely... Um, make sure that you you sort of ask the interviewer for a little bit of help. But mm. there are also obviously, you know, conversation repair phrases that you can use, which are useful in, in exams and useful in interviews. So you could say something like, I'm sorry, could you say that again? Or mm. sorry, would you mind repeating that? Or mm. I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Even that, um, mm. use these kind of these phrases to get the conversation back on track mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's great i think and the, the advice i give in in for exams is, is just as i said be natural and and honest in some ways you don't i think it's very clear when uh, an interviewee or an exam candidate is trying to hide it they've obviously they don't know what to say and as you said they're just kind of sitting there in silence and they don't know how to to continue but just just be honest you could say i've sorry i've lost my train of thought or as you said where where was i or could you repeat the question yeah. you have to say something don't you you can't yes. just sit there waiting for for inspiration so yeah it, and while you say something like that so you know where was i and, and then the interview is talking then that gives you kind of thinking time so yeah. you, you gain a few seconds when you do that yeah just to gather your thoughts and and yeah. and start again I think obviously again when it's when you're speaking the second language it could just be that you've you can't think of the word you wanted to use and you, it's natural that you do panic as you said it's it's easy to say don't panic but um take a deep breath and think of a, another way of explaining what you want to say um and uh, yeah use a you said a, a re recovery words did you say or um, uh, yes no, repair, conversation re repair rescue words. yes ah, or, rescue. Yeah. <laughs> conversation rescue conversation yeah. repair yes yeah. any of these sort of strategies to um get back to where you were in the conversation and what about if it's just a really <laughs> tricky difficult question um that you you're really struggling with any any advice there yeah so i think the difficult questions are the questions that you can't predict and um so the questions that come to mind are questions that i call stress questions and um they these are questions where there may not be a right answer but the interviewer wants to know how your mind thinks so for example you could get a question how many golf balls will fit in to the Empire State Building? Mm, right. Yeah. I mean, they don't want an I answer. Don't, <laughs> I don't yeah. think there is a right answer. Yeah. Um, so the interviewer wants to know how are you going to approach that question? Mm. So, I mean, if it was me, I mean, first of all, I would think this is a really stupid question. Mm. I don't really know why you're asking me it, but. But I would answer anyway, because you can't really say to an interviewer, <laughs> that's a really dumb question. Next, so, next question, please. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Next. So yeah. you could say something like, well, the way to approach this question is to find out how many golf balls would fit into a cubic meter. Let's say it is 1,000. And then the next thing we need to find out is how many cubic meters are in the Empire State Building. And that might be a million. Mm -hmm. So we multiply a million by the number of uh, balls that fit into a cubic meter. And there is your reply. Yeah. So, you know, you have to find a way of, of uh, showing the uh, interviewer the way that you that your mind is thinking. But then there are other types of questions, which I also think are quite difficult. And they're questions like, where do you see yourself in five years time? Mm. And that's a really horrible yeah. yeah horrible question because sometimes you don't know where you're going to be in one year, let yeah. alone or tomorrow. Like... <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. So how do you answer that question? So I think again, it's it's an it's a good idea to relate it back to that job. So you could say, well, you know, I don't know where I'm going to be in five years' time, but I'm really interested in working for this company i'm i really like the way that you have a graduate management program and i very much hope to be able to get on that and to and to start making an impact in the organization mm. for example so yeah. relate it to your relate that sort of question back to your general 
uh, career ambitions and even more um, if you can relate it to that particular job in that particular company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. I'm just thinking probably the, the most feared question I think people have in, in the job interviews, in job interviews in general is um, tell us about your weaknesses or, or give one or two weaknesses or whatever. And most, you know, the typical answer that to that is I'm a perfectionist or I, I'm too, I'm too honest or I don't know, I'm, I'm too generous using mm. Positive. I don't know. Maybe that is a good strategy. I don't know. But you, that type of question. Yeah, everybody that? says that, as you say, yeah. I'm too much of a perfectionist. Yeah. So I think a good way to approach that is when you look at the, the job description, when you've gone through all the things that they want and you know that you can do 80 percent of those things, then mm. you should apply for the job. So your weakness is one of the, the remaining 20 percent. Mm -hmm. for example so it could be um, a technical skill so if the job wants um, I don't know c2 level proficiency and you only have c1 level proficiency you could say right well I recently tested with Cambridge and I'm c1 level I know the job requires c2 level but and this is when you say what you're doing to Mm. address that weakness but I'm enrolled on a course to get myself up to C2 level and I expect to be there within six weeks I mean try and give them an idea of how far it's going to how long it's going to take you to get up to speed with that weakness Mm -hmm. Um, it could be technical weaknesses like I'm not 100% proficient with Excel but I'm learning Excel right now and I've already made a lot of progress and I'm pretty confident with most of the applications. There are just a couple that I want to get up to speed with. Mm-hmm. So it's a good idea, I think, to uh, to decide yourself where your weakness, weaknesses are in relation to the job description and then say what you're doing to, um, you know, to, to improve in that area. And if you can, how long it will take you, because that shows the employer or the um, interviewer that you have thought about the job, that mm. you have thought about where you can improve and that you have this kind of self-awareness and that you're also taking steps to put the situation right or, you know, to, to be their 100 percent desired candidate. So mm. but but whatever you do, don't just say, oh, I'm a perfectionist and it mm. takes me too long to do things because most companies do not want to hear that. No. And yeah, and you, know, you don't want to say uh, I'm always late or, or things exactly. like that. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And of course, if you're if it is that you're you have a C1 level and you're working towards a C2 level, you could say you're watching Ben's videos on to the point English with Ben and taking his C2 proficiency course. Of course, you that would say that would really impress <laughs> and you must the do that as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking, so half joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, those are the difficult, tricky questions. But what about other types of questions, like inappropriate questions? Because there are certain questions that shouldn't be asked in interviews, right? But yes, some interviewers do ask yes, them. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm not sure about um, everywhere in the world, but at least in the UK, we have equality legislation. So that means that you can't ask questions that will lead to discrimination of certain protected characteristics. So for example, it means that you can't ask a woman about her plans to have children. Mm-hmm. It means you can't ask about a candidate's health history. Uh, you can't ask a candidate about their age, which is incidentally one of the reasons why you should not put your date of birth on your CV. Ah, right. So, <laughs> so if somebody asks you one of these questions, it's very tricky because you can't say, I don't want to answer that because mm-hmm. that kind of looks bad. I mean, you could possibly say, I'm not 100% comfortable mm-hmm. uh, replying to that question, or you can find a way around. So if somebody's asking you about your health, you could say, you know, I'm 100% fit and ready to start work. Mm-hmm. You know, that nobody can really argue with that. Um, If somebody asks you about your availability and maybe they're trying to find out, do you have children or whatever? Mm. You know, you could say um, I'm 100 percent able to work a full time job and I'm really excited to get started. You know, again, 
um, lead back to to that job that you're applying for and why you want it. Mm. Um, so answer the question, but in a way that doesn't um, discriminate discriminate against you. Mm. Yeah, that's really good because it's so difficult, isn't it? Because you 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 know that though they shouldn't ask those questions, but you, you know you you want the job. You want to. Yeah. You don't want to just say I, that's an inappropriate question. You shouldn't be yeah. asking answering asking that. So yeah, they're, they're really good ways to get around it. And finally, I mean, we've spoken a little bit about this, like being prepared, um, because when it's you know most people, <laughs> apart from the really weird people, <laughs> most people get nervous in job interviews. I think it's completely normal and good in some way. I think it helps you to focus. Yeah. Uh, same with the exams again, getting a bit nervous. It helps you to 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 prepare. It motivates you to prepare for the the interview, but also focuses you focuses you on the day of the interview. But sometimes, you know, people get extremely nervous and extremely anxious, and it can have a detrimental effect. So, <clears throat> any last tips in in that area? Yes, um, I think obviously it is such a, a stressful situation um and you can't predict everything and you might think that the that the interview has gone really really badly but i would say one thing that you can do if um you're worried that you haven't said anything correctly you can start asking questions to the interviewer and i think when you ask a question you're getting back some of that kind of the balance of power a little bit one question i would always suggest that you ask the interviewer is about when they're going to make a decision because that's going to reduce your stress after you leave the interview so you could say something like can you tell me about your timeline for making a decision? You know, meaning when when are you going to make a decision about this job? Is it going to be next week, next mm. month? So at least you then know um, yeah. what to expect. But otherwise, I would say some sort of strategies are to really focus on the questions that you get. Um, practice some um, deep breathing. Um, so kind of like before you go into the interview and kind of exhale a little bit, um, that will kind of calm you down. It will calm down the stress levels a little bit. Um, try not to speak too fast. Try to speak um, with a lower tone rather than speaking too high. Try and speak mm. lower um, and, and you know, to to moderate what you're, you're speaking. Don't, don't go too fast. Mm. Um, those things will help you also to think about the words that you need. And really, I know this sounds um, uh, counterintuitive, but try to enjoy the uh, the situation. Yeah. <laughs> it does sound counterintuitive. No, I say the same to my students regarding the exams. It, it sounds, yeah, but I think just having that mindset, just thinking, oh, maybe I can enjoy it. I think people sometimes don't even think about the, the, the possibility of enjoying a, an interview or an exam. So, yeah, sorry, I interrupted you, but no, 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 that, that, oh. no, I, I finished. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah, I think that's that's so useful, and yeah, I mean, it's such a pity when people get so nervous that they, you know, they can't demonstrate in this case to the interviewer, you know, how great they are and how appropriate they are for the for the job. I, I, I think I've learned a lot from this interview. It almost makes me feel like applying for a job myself <laughs> just, just to go through the process. <laughs> Try out the tips. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I and mean, maybe, you know, the way that technology and artificial intelligence is going, I think maybe English teachers could be uh, looking for different careers soon, but um, so that may be something I'll be, I'll be using, but a lot of really good tips there and, and advice. So of course I'm going to link to, to Claire's um, fluency courses and, and um, all her details in the description to this video. Um, so yeah, fantastic. Anything you'd like to add before we finish, Claire? No, thank you very much indeed for inviting me to your YouTube channel. Of course, if you have any questions, um, people can feel free to contact me. And I know that um, you're going to link to my site. So thank you very much, Ben. All I would say to the people who have got interviews coming up, good luck with them. And I hope you get your dream job. <laughs> fantastic. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Bye-bye.